right, Joshua Jernigan, a.k.a. Ashley Knuckles with StandingFight.com, and I'm here with the former IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Pauly, Ma Pauly Matchman Malinaji. Malinaji. Pauly, what's good, bro? Just chillin', man. Just came to do this presser, hype this fight, ready to throw hands on Saturday night, baby. All right, uh, training camp obviously was good. You look like you're in great shape. Uh, who are some of the guys? What do you think? What do you think? Oh, yeah, look like you're ready, bro. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. What do you guys think? All right. All right. All right. Who are some of the guys you've been training with in training camp? Oh, we have some young guys who sparring with Saddam Ali, 2008 uh, Olympian, a U.S. Olympian, like Glenn Tapia, Jeremy Bryan, Sharif Junan, Yunan Jr., my trainer's son, national J.O. champion. Already? Yeah. Only 13 years old. Look at the size this guy. He's bigger than 13. Stop playing. I'm telling you, it's oh, the truth. Man. Look at his birth certificate. But anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so we've been mixing and matching the young guys. Uh, you know, they give you the best work. They're hungry, and uh, you know, little by little, they add up the rounds too. All right, you'll be going to, uh, going up against on, former lightweight champion in the world, Juan Diaz. Is there anything in this game that you think you may have to uh, look out for? Um, I don't know about what can happen to look out for anything, but I think uh, he likes to come forward. I like when guys come forward. Um, he likes guys going backwards. I like to go backwards. So I think we both play with each other's strengths. You know, it's a matter of who's better at what they do, and that's who's going to win the fight. And I believe I'm the better man. Absolutely. You've been in the ring with some of the best fighters in the entire world, like Miguel Cotto, Ricky Hatton. You've been in with tough warriors like Lovemore and Do. Uh, how do you rank? What, how do you rank Juan on the scale of the guys you fought on? Um, I don't think he's better than uh, Cotto. I think he's better than Hatton, though. The difference is I'm coming much better than Ricky. Than I came on for, with the Ricky Hatton fight. Uh, so I, I, I rank Diaz up there, man. Uh, I rank Diaz up there. I don't think anybody I fought uh, I'm gonna fight ever again is gonna rank up there with Cotto, man. I'm telling you, Cotto's a tough guy, man. But uh, uh, I rank Diaz behind him. But uh, I, I think he's better than Hatton. Okay, it's obviously that you're confident in victory this Saturday. What are you hoping that a victory over Juan Diaz does for your career? I'm just hoping, you know, a win does, we all looking for wins because we're looking to propel our careers. You know, uh, both of us come off of tough losses, tough fights, in, in fights where we really needed to win those fights, they would have propelled us to superstardom. So, maybe we're just looking to get back on the road to superstardom and, and get that cash and, and get that movement going as far as uh, getting your name out there and stuff like that, you know? So, uh, a win over Juan Diaz propels me into that road again, and that's important to me. All right. It's obvious that you're worried about uh, the fact that they may rob you here in Texas. Um, what do you have to say about that? I mean, uh, hey, listen, man. The politics of the game are such that I don't control. I control what my preparation for the fight. And so I'm going to put it out there that I'm worried about it, but at the same time, I have control of my own preparation. My own preparation is stellar right now. I'm ready to go. You know what I'm saying? And so having said that, I told Vicky Cole, the commissioner afterwards, he assured me everything will be honest. Listen, if one DS beats me fair and square, God bless him, I shake his hand, but he does not, I don't see any way possible one day this Saturday night, man. I'm that sharp right now. You know what I mean? So, having said that, I expect a fair shake. Mr. Cole uh, guaranteed me a fair shake should everything go that way. And um, I'm ready to get it then, man. I, 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 I got some trust. Like I said, I'm going to handle me. I'm going to handle one day. Regan Ronnie Shields made it clear. He said, if you fight one day, you're not fighting the judges. Hey, absolutely, man. I trained to fight one day, bro. Believe me, they're going to be ready. They're going to they gonna know exactly what I trained for. Absolutely. Uh, what is your prediction for the fight this Saturday? Domination. Poly Malani, you're going to know Paulie Malani is back on the map, man. You're going to know he never went anywhere. What I've been saying is the truth. Okay, so I'm saying is the truth. Like I'm a new trainer, we got a wrinkle back, we got a swagger back, ready to rock and roll. All right, how's the hand? Hand is excellent. Do they look good? Yeah, they look great, man. A little heavy with the extra diamonds, but. Oh, you know, hey, you do what you, you do, go, you know what I'm saying? Can't wipe, can't wipe the pimping off with a rag, you feel me? Yeah, I feel you, man. <laughs> All right, bro. Hey, good luck, Paulie. Thank you, man. Thanks for the interview. No problem. Thank you. All right, this is Joshua Jernigan with StandingFight.com, and I'm here with the former four-time four lightweight champion of the world, Juan the Baby Bull Diaz. Juan, what's going on, bro? Oh, man, you know, just here enjoying the moment. This is always uh, the best part of training camp and the best, fight, the best part of boxing, man, is the fact that you get all the hard work done, and then you're finally here. It's finally showtime. All right. Uh, all the hard work is done. Like you said, you've had excellent sparring. Who are some of the guys you've been sparring with for this training camp? Man, I was sparring with uh, Dominique Sucero, who's my number one sparring partner. David Torres uh, from Washington. And uh, Rashad. Rashad, I always forget his last name, man. I, I, uh, I stopped saying it because I was mispronouncing it so much, but he's from Arkansas. I had uh, uh, these three guys who come that came and helped me out, uh, kind of mimic uh, Pali Malinaji's style and, you know, aggressive boxing and uh, just gave me some terrific sparring. All right. I'm sure you're very confident of victory for the fight this weekend. What are you hoping a victory over Paul Malinaji would do for your career? 
I think uh, a victory with Tom Malonaggi will catapult me back into the, uh, the, the top 10 contenders in the world, man. Not only the lightweight or super lightweight, but the, the world. I, I, I believe that I can become world champion once again, and I will do so. By, uh, after I beat Tom Malonaggi, I believe that this is a great opportunity for me to be uh, uh, successful again in, in either the lightweight or super lightweight division. Absolutely. Recently, Paul Malonaggi was on the website. On, online talking about how he feels that all the cards are stacked against him. He feels that the judges, the referee, everything that can be in your in your favor is in your favor, including the ringside. Do you think he's already setting up an excuse uh, just in case he's unsuccessful this weekend? I believe so, man. When guys get up there and they make a lot of excuses, it's because they're already setting this up for failure. If that was me in his position, that would make me even work harder and more hungry to come and prove to the hometown uh, man that, you know what, I'm going to come to your hometown and beat you. But him, he's already making excuses, and I don't know why he's making them now. You know, you didn't hear him uh, make these excuses two months ago when he agreed to the fight. All right. Everyone knows that you want to rematch real bad with Juan Manuel Marquez pending a victory or defeat over Floyd Mayweather Jr. Is that the only guy that you're looking forward to fighting after this particular fight? Definitely, man. That's my. That's the only guy I have on my radar until I fight that guy. You know, whoever stands in my way, it doesn't matter if I fight him in my next fight, next year, two years, three, three years from now, it doesn't matter. Whoever stands in my way, I'm going to get him out of there because ultimately that's my goal is to find a fight and rematch with him, with Juan Manuel Marquez. Absolutely. Uh, Juan, uh, once again, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, how do you think the fight is going to end? Are you going to stop him or is he going to see the end of the fight? Is he going to see the end of the 12th round? Well, man, you know, me as a boxer, I always uh, hope and, and pray for for knockouts, especially in the first or second round. But I know that uh, Malinaj is a tough guy and I'm, I'm prepared to go to a round. Absolutely. Thanks again, Juan. Good luck this weekend. All right, AK. Actually, no. All right, bro. <laughs>